I greet you today in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, and I welcome you to the Voice of Hope. Truly our God is an amazing God, and I want to tell somebody today that there is still nothing that is too hard for our God to do. Amen. In the midst of all that we're facing, in the midst of all that we're going through, God remains God. God remains faithful. And I love the fact that God is the God who always comes through. Regardless of what it looks like, God always comes through. And so today as we get started, for those who are new to the Voice of Hope, I like to remind us all that it is based on Psalm chapter 42 verse 11, where in the face of all that David was going through, David chose to encourage himself in the Lord. He says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. We serve a God of the impossible. It said repeatedly in the Bible, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And so we can place our trust, our hope, or everything in Him as we go through whatever life throws our way. My name is Trisha Beckles and I really give God thanks and give God praise because of the beauty of his word. And there is always something that we can pull out and apply it to our lives. And so in the last episode, we started to talk a little bit about Ishmael. And we looked at the fact that, you know, for all that we've heard over the years about Ishmael and Isaac, you know, we began taking a look and not just another look. And this time focusing a little bit more on Ishmael's perspective. I'll get into it a little more, but as always, we want to commit everything into God's hands at this time. And so, Father and God, we just honor you today. We give you thanks and we give you praise because indeed there is no one else like you. We thank you, O oh God, for your mercies in bringing us here to see this day. We thank you, God, for who you are. We know and we rejoice in the fact that all honor, all glory, and all praise belongs only unto you. And God, we give it freely today. We say hallelujah to the King of all kings. We say hallelujah to the Lord of all lords. We say thank you, God, because it is only by your mercies that we are not consumed. And so, great God, we commit everything about our lives, our cares, our concerns into your hands. We commit this time of sharing into your hands, Father. We say, God, receive all the glory, receive all the honor, receive all the praise. We thank you even now for dispatching your heavenly host, dear God, to watch over everything that concerns us, mighty God, and for saturating the atmosphere with your presence. Lord, we know and we understand that you care about the things that concern us. And God, you remind us that even as always, please you, you are able to make our enemies to be at peace with us. So Prince of Peace, we give you the glory. We thank you for this avenue that is T-I-N, O oh God. And in the midst of all that the enemy may try against this station, we thank you that God, you are able to keep, you are able to protect, you are able to deliver. And so we cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, O oh God, for equipping us with the whole armor of God, that God, we will walk in victory over every plot, plan, scheme, purpose, and device of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. So God, we commit this time into your hands and we say, have your way. We give you the glory. God, we give you the honor. We give you all the praise, even now, as we say, be thou glorified, great God. In Jesus' name, amen. Truly, God is good. So as we started to dive into Ishmael a little bit, we understood then that if you look, take, just take a closer look. So much of Ishmael's life, some of us can really identify with and take courage and take strength from the fact that God in the midst of all that was going on was still in control. I mean, I can ask the question today, how many of us, and I'm saying us, how many of us know what it is like to suffer loss or to suffer persecution or maybe an attack or some kind of punishment or some kind of ridicule? How many of us? I am sure most of us can identify with it. And when you think about it, even in the midst of this pandemic season, how many of us can identify with losing some kind of comfortable way of living that you came to know and love? 
seemingly through no fault of your own and yet you know you, you're trying to go through it you're trying to stay strong and there seems to be no kind of immediate resolution in sight but I'm saying today and I'm rejoicing in the fact that in the midst of it all God sees and God hears and we can smile because as we look at Ishmael the Strong's concordance confirms to us that the meaning of the name Ishmael is God hears so that it may seem like trivia but it tells us that God is indeed interested in every single area of our lives and so just to recap briefly we know that Abram was a man who served God faithfully he left his country he left his loved ones because God told him to and God in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5 promised Abram a seed and not just one seed he said his seed will be as numerous as the stars and yet Abram was an old man but in chapter 15 verse 6 Abram believed God I mean he already considered himself childless he described himself as childless this was in verses 2 to 3 he started to look at other persons in his household as possible heirs of what God had blessed him with and I mean as we looked at it closer we don't have any record of Abram telling his wife Sarai about what God told him in that instance and yet as we looked at Genesis chapter 15 we saw that Sarai had this bright idea since she herself had you know probably written off childbearing she herself said listen I'm going to send Abram into my handmaid Hagar who was an Egyptian and so her thinking in that regard as we saw in Genesis chapter 16 verse 2 was that it may be that I may obtain children by her so it wasn't just a case of just saying well okay we'll just go barren and everything else Hagar was looked on in something of a surrogate mother type of scenario as we would know it in this day and age but then things began to change once Hagar realized that she was pregnant and so as a result she got some harsh treatment from Sarai and she fled the scene but in the wilderness the angel of God met with Hagar and comfort her and sent her right back to Sarai but not only that that angel of God prophesied over Ishmael about God what God will do in his life and so with that promise Hagar returned to Sarai she bears a son which incredibly Abram named the exact name that the angel told Hagar to name the child there's no record of you know the angel coming to Abram and telling him to name the child Ishmael but as Genesis chapter 16 verse 16 told us Abram named the child Ishmael because God continues to work even when we don't necessarily see him at work or we are tempted to wonder what is God doing in this situation or in this season and I'm sure you know in our society in our setup now everybody's wondering well how soon we started to hear about people looking at you know maybe June July and the, the Omicron variant is gonna die down soon people are starting to make predictions because we have become so tired of COVID but can I remind somebody that God is working in the midst regardless of what it looks like and so as we go back to Abram at 86 years old Abram now have finally had flesh and blood in his house by way of Ishmael and as a result we can imagine then that in his joy he was likely you know Ishmael was likely given a lot of the benefits of being an heir regardless of the fact of his mother because as we established he would have been considered something of a surrogate son to Sarai but at age 13 it, it, you know it goes on to tell us that at age 13 when God appeared to Abram again and made that covenant with Abram when Ishmael was 13 the, the, the covenant was going to be sealed by circumcision and Ishmael was one of the first to get circumcised as being part of Abram's household so it served to further cement the fact that Ishmael was truly a son of Abram 
even though at that time God had told Abram that he will have a child by Sarai it didn't happen yet that was when God changed his name from Abram to Abraham and changed Sarai's name to Sarah Ishmael was 13 years old at the time and so in the year that followed God fulfilled his promise when Isaac was born Ishmael was still a part of the household of Abraham but you know now he was not necessarily the heir as was established by God but he was still Abram's seed but as would happen sometimes teenage years you know kind of stupid kind of under folly Ishmael was caught mocking and so being caught mocking his distress started and so we were told then that Sarai said unto Abram cast out this bondwoman and her son for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son even with Isaac I mean you could imagine the attitude and so to Sarah he was no longer the son she couldn't have or the surrogate son but instead he was now Hagar's son and dispensable the same way Hagar was and so she got rid of them both Genesis 21 11 tells us that it was grievous to Abraham but in the midst of all of that Abraham was given an assurance from the angel and I think this is where we left off and having been given that assurance Abraham sent Hagar and Ishmael away and the Bible tells us with some bread and a bottle of water he sent them away the following morning so if you think about it within one day within the space of one day Ishmael at 14 years old went from living a life of plenty to where now he you know he was seemingly ran out of the only life he knew for 14 years and it seemed to be something so small mocking and you know sometimes in life things pile up and you don't do anything about it and it only takes one little incident and the whole thing just explodes the way you didn't even think it could but in the midst of it and I you know I had to ask the question then have you has anyone ever made a mistake in your life to where somehow the consequences just seem so much more severe than you ever imagined than you ever thought about and if that's you today I'm saying welcome to Ishmael's world I mean it might seem like a small joke a small this a small that but look at what happened I mean it's one thing that Sarah was upset but you know when you think about it that your own dad who raised you and was with you for 14 years would then discard you with nothing really to stand or to survive on how would you feel I mean 14 may seem you know old enough some people had it even earlier on in life to feel abandoned and you have to take care of your, your loved ones with what you is when you yourself need to be taken care of but can I remind somebody today God remains faithful and if you think about it further between him and his mom in the wilderness as a teenager under the Jewish tradition even I mean where they do bar mitzvahs and that type of stuff at around 13 he would have started to have some kind of expectation as to what he should be doing as a young man coming up but he no longer was that sheltered Ishmael and here he's now in the wilderness having to fend for himself and for his mom think about it a little closer and let's read Genesis chapter 21 we're going to read from verse 14 to 17 and it says and Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away and she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba and the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the shrubs and she went and sat her down over against him a good way off as if it were a bow shot for she said let me not see the death of the child and she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept 
and God heard the voice of the lad and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her what aileth thee Hagar fear not for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is understand I mean let me go back to verse 17 again it says and God heard the voice of the lad Hagar was crying yes but God paid attention to the voice of the lad and the verse says and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her what aileth thee Hagar fear not for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is hallelujah you see because God is interested in each and every one of us God knows everything that is going on with each and every one of us and in the midst of it all he still is able to intervene in our lives to intervene in our situations regardless of how desperate it looks like it might be and so this verse was the only indication that we have of Ishmael whether crying out or, or just being totally distressed being probably confused being probably devastated and God in the midst of it God heard his cry I mean when you think about it Hagar chose to as the scripture said cast him off and go a good ways off a bow shot the distance that a, a bow and arrow would, would go just that she did not have to sit and witness the death of her child sometimes in the midst of all that we face things seem to go downhill so fast that we only see destruction we can't see a way out but I'm saying to that person today if that is you God sees you right where you are there is still nothing that is too hard for God to do I'm saying hold on and know that God is seeing you hold on and know that God has got you God is able to take care of the things that concern you and yes life tends to prove to us that sometimes even the most innocent of our mistakes can have major major consequences but can I tell you today that God is still able to work with those mistakes God is still able to use them for his purpose because God remains the faithful God in spite of and in the face of all that you go through he is still God can somebody trust him today because he is still God he still sees and he still knows and even in the most dire of circumstances God is still working and his promises remain if you remember he was promises were spoken over Ishmael's life even before he was born hallelujah I mean in Genesis 17 20 for example we are told the angel said as as for Ishmael I have heard thee behold I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly 12 princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation now think about that and think about Ishmael in the wilderness water run out bread more than likely nothing in sight and this promise was spoken over his life who would think in that scenario that this person this child that is about to die that his mother could not even bear to look at him die would become a great nation will be a fruitful person it tells us then that God remains faithful even when we don't see how and it helps me to even be reminded of when ultimately Abraham had to was called to sacrifice Isaac there were a number of promises made over Isaac's life as well he was also going to be a great nation and we, are, we, we, we know from earlier that God told him his seed will be as you know as numerous as the stars and yet here was the one seed being offered up for a sacrifice 
and the one seed even asking but dad where is the goat where is the animal for the sacrifice and Abraham answered the Lord will provide and I'm saying to you today just as dire as it seemed for Ishmael in the wilderness just as dire as it seemed for Hagar God was still working because what God has promised he is able to perform his word will never return to him void it will accomplish that which he sent it forth to do and so he said that he will make Ishmael fruitful he will multiply him exceedingly sometimes you don't see it and you just have to say okay God I'm waiting on you I am thanking you God I'm trusting you because you're not a man that you should lie and so because you have said it God we know you will perform it hallelujah because he is God let's look at another promise hallelujah Hagar was told in Genesis 21 18 arise lift up the lad and hold him in thine hand for I will make him a great nation in the midst of the wilderness in the midst of desert in terms of lack Hagar was given an instruction. I mean, when you think about it, what choice did she have? She had already resigned herself to seeing him die, as painful as it was. But here came another option. Why should she think that anything would be different? But Hagar chose to obey. Even before Abraham let Ishmael go, God told Abraham in Genesis 21:13. And also the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation because he is thy seed. So yes, Ishmael was not the promised child, but God still had purpose for him. God still was able to use him. God still was able to do exceedingly abundantly above. Sometimes, you know, in the midst of things, we look at people and we want what they have. We want to do what we think they are doing. We want to be like them. When in truth and in fact, God has placed special gifts in each and every one of us. God has called us for purpose. And even as we focus on God, he's able to lead us into that purpose and to use us. I mean, in that scenario, could Ishmael have seen himself become a great nation? And I'm, I'm, I'm purposefully staying away from, you know, the whole argument as to who is the promised child and the different religions that have sprung forth. I'm saying in the midst of it all, God is still able to use what looks like a bad situation, what looks like desperation. When you can't answer the questions in your own mind, God is still working. Ishmael, we, we didn't get any indication that Ishmael had his own relationship with God. And yet God heard his voice. God heard when he cried. Who did he cry to? He cried. Because the Bible reminds us that God is near to the brokenhearted. What teenager do you know has been rejected in a sense by his father and been okay with it? When that father was a loving father all those years, it will affect you. And so Ishmael cried because the Bible reminds us as well that when mother and father forsake you the Lord will take you up so God is always seeing you in the midst of all that he allows you to face similar to Samuel Samuel didn't really have a relationship with God just yet but God still spoke to him and God still had a plan for him and I want us to take it as we ask ourselves today who am I before God and we can rejoice knowing that God sees us just as we are Yes, we make mistakes, but God is still willing and able to work with us. There are some of us that haven't even forgiven ourselves. And even as we see consequences going along, we, we wonder, well, what else can I do? And we, tend to, we want to give up on ourselves. We want to give up on our dreams. We want to say, well, what's the point? But I cancel every plot 
every trick every scheme every petition of the enemy against your life today in the mighty name of Jesus and I declare in the name of Jesus that you shall not die but you shall live and you will fulfill the purpose of God for your life even as you seek God even as you yield to the Spirit of the Living God and God will get the glory out of your life even as you learn to delight yourself in the Lord and in the things of the Lord because God has a plan God has a purpose for you and God will accomplish it as you yield yourself to him for his honor and his glory and so father and God we just give you the praise we magnify and we exalt worship and honor you today we thank you oh God that every purpose of the enemy against our lives is defeated even now in the mighty name of Jesus and God we just commit ourselves we commit our lives unto you afresh we say, God, you receive all the glory, receive all the honor, God, receive all of the praise because only you are worthy. We thank you, great God. And we look to you, O oh God, to take us through every single thing you'll allow us to face. As we give you all honor, God, we give you all glory and all praise. We say thank you even now in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Just know and understand and rejoice in the fact that God sees you and God hears you and he'll be able to perfect everything that concerns you today. Hallelujah. <laughs>